gain my situation. But of course, still like everybody, the situation came for myself in the daily routine that I'm sure everybody, which myself included, will participate in. So in the morning while we prepare for work or school, we will certainly still glance of ourselves in the mirror and in pops in several glances of self-judgment used to issue few statements sounding similar to these. You know, oh, I wish I had longer legs. Um, I wish I was smarter and my cap was higher. Or is that a pimple on my face? Now, the nature of these questions can actually offer an explanation on why we tend to sway towards negativity in certain points of our lives. In Singapore society today, we are placed under immense amount of stress every day in work and studies. And thus, with the lack of appropriate attitude and lack of a proper venue to channel the amount of stress in an appropriate manner, it will thus lead to a losing of our self-confidence, lowering of our self-esteem as a mechanism to cope with the adversities that we face in our everyday lives. This then brings me to what I'm here today to share about on tips that I adopted from an online article written by John Bobo in 2011 on the methods and ways to counter the issues of low self-esteem. The first tip that I would like to share with you guys would be this self-esteem inventory. This self-esteem inventory can easily be translated into a simple exercise where you take a piece of paper and divide it into two respective columns, uh, one for your weaknesses and one for your strengths. So under each respective columns, further list down 10 attributes which contribute to your strengths and your weaknesses. Now, this may seem challenging for someone with low self-esteem but even so, try to force yourself or your friends to complete this exercise in order to fully utilize the benefits of this exercise. Now through this, we can then let ourselves know how much we suck at it, but at the same time, letting ourselves know how much things we do not suck at as well. So, by identifying your weaknesses and working on them through a realistic period of a month or a year, and at the same time, recognizing the fact that nobody changes The second tip that I'll be sharing with you guys would be coping with imperfections by acknowledging both sides of everybody's coin, our flaws as well as our accomplishments. Now, we first have to open up ourselves to the notion of imperfection by reading of by reading get rid sorry by reading ourselves of the mindset of attaining perfection that has been instilled in us since we were young. Now, perfection is a largely exaggerated virtue that has brainwashed the majority of us through the access of social media such as television, where the creation of our artificial society diluted our realistic thoughts into a make belief that perfection can actually exist. Thus, instead of belittling our achievements, like most of us would do, strive and aim to acknowledge them and not subjugate them just because they seem insignificant or trivial to you. Recognize also your mistakes and sees them as windows of opportunities for learning and growth and not see it as a flaw that will label you as a bad person. Easier said than done, as usual, as quote from the article, if we only push ourselves out of self-pity and self-negativity that we develop in after the mistake and try to see it from someone else's eyes. Now, the third and the final tip that I would like to share with you guys, which I personally find most important, is to stop ourselves from getting now, this is the most evident situation that most of us will sink into, be it in our past, in the present, or in the future when we, when we enter the workforce. Now, the lack of empathy in these comparisons between you and your friends and you and your co-workers can be extremely harmful to your self-esteem. Especially so in this age of technology, where we have extreme exposure to different forms of social media, such as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, which only worsens the indulgence of such unjustified comparisons. Now, we have to realize that these comparisons are unfair in nature due to the lack of totality of the individual situation that is unique to every one of us. Let's take, for instance, we have a guy named Joe. He has several thousands of followers on Instagram, but for what we may not know, he might have paid for that many friends. So even though it is tough to stop subjecting ourselves to such unfair comparisons, we have to learn and adapt to manage such comparisons and know when it is appropriate to draw the proper line. Thus today, to wrap up my presentation, 
I would like to reiterate that it is only through a combination of self-discipline and self-respect that one can really learn the true meaning behind self-worth. So perhaps in the future, when we glance ourselves in the mirror once again, stand firmly on two feet, push away your negative connotations, and replace them with positive thoughts, such as, you know, I am comfortable with my body, <coughs> and I am now, and so on and so forth. So to conclude, learn to love yourself in the same way, and I hope the tips I shared with you guys can be beneficial to you guys in the long run. And I thank all of you for the time.